Nick Spinelli, a career-long Serato DJ user, decides to use Virtual DJ for one week straight and compare the differences. Here's his story. I'm a scientist today, people. I'm doing DJ experiments. What's up, people? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you hit the like, comment down below, because I'm sure you're gonna have something to say about this one. I got a crazy ass episode. I did a whole experiment. I used Virtual DJ for a whole week, and I compared all the features, and I'm gonna give you my honest, unbiased review, and here it comes. And by the way, bruh, if you're not subscribing by now, Help me out, hit that sub button. You're missing out. You might be late watching this. If you're watching this video right now and it's how many months old? Like, you missed it, you missed it. So I used Virtual DJ for a whole week as an experiment, I wanted to learn all about it, kind of rework certain features, figure out what I liked, what I didn't like, everything, so I can do a super thorough comparison between Serato and Virtual DJ, coming from like 100% Serato user. Like I scream Serato from the mountaintops, I love Serato, I've loved it for over a decade now, been using it forever, so you know, I can really give you a good perspective jumping between the two. So I did a ton of research, and I'm gonna talk about which program I believe is better for each of the the following categories, ready? Number one is the look. Number two, performance. Number three, features. Number four, cool factor. Number five, stability. Number six, price. And number seven, the company, how it was founded, and their overall values. So now that we know the seven categories, let's start the show. So let's start with category number one, the look. So Serato has always had a clean and super professional look to the program. It felt like a professional program. And this was a big problem I always kind of had with Virtual DJ because Virtual DJ, for years and years and years, definitely with Virtual DJ 7, definitely with Virtual DJ 8, it always just looked like a toyish program to me. Like it, did, it just, I didn't like the look of it. It was a little cluttered and just, I don't know, a lot of people said it too. You know, you gotta admit, it was kinda ugh, like for years and years. But I'm not gonna lie, people, they finally fixed it. With Virtual DJ 2020 and then now the new 2021, it actually does have a clean, flat, super professional looking like screen or whatever the hell you wanna call about. You know, the, the look of it, the look of it looks great. I, I think Virtual DJ hit a home run with the look. It looks a lot, lot better and it just seems more professional to me. Between the two programs, they both look amazing with high res screens. I use a Retina Mac and they both are crystal clear. They have like the high res capability, which I think is huge. They both have night or day mode, so you can switch between the two. And when it comes over to the overall look in general, Serato's a little more limited as far as customization. When it comes to Virtual DJ, you can get a skin for anything. It's ridiculous. You could do a skin to have the Star Wars themed on your turntables and all that stuff. You can basically, I don't know, there's a ton of shit you can do with it. And the skins also come with extra decks. So Serato, you can only have up to four decks, right? So each deck you kind of DJ with. You could play a song on each deck. So you get one, two, or three and four if you want to get crazy. Virtual DJ, on the other hand, I found skins where you can have up to 99 decks. 99 decks. I mean, come on, 99 decks, people. I mean, you got a different deck for every finger, right? Your, your, your dick, your balls, and pretty much every guest at your party because like nowadays it's gonna be social distance and you're only allowed to have like 20 people per party. Anyway, so you'd still have probably what, 40, 50 decks left over? Well, who's gonna play on those? Like I don't understand why you ever need, anyway, I don't know. That's all here nor there, but regardless, if I had to say who wins the overall look I would say it's actually a tie because it really depends on your personal preference, right? You might like the customization features, you might like to customize it and make your virtual look all crazy and match your favorite movie or your favorite theme, your favorite color, whatever that is, or you might like the simplicity of Serato as I do. So it depends on your personal preference and since both can pretty much do everything except for the dumbass 99 Dex thing, I would say it's a solid tie between the look. Category number two is the performance. So what I mean by performance is actually using the program, how the program works, how does it feel, right? Like the performance of the actual program. Now when it comes to Serato, I've used Serato for years because I typically use turntables, that's what I always use to DJ and it just, I, to me, 
I love it. I think it's super smooth. It's made for turntables. I mean, everything is so on point. It feels like you're playing with legit real vinyl and just everything is just butter. It's just butter with Serato. It really, really is. Now with Virtual DJ, it did plug and play with anything I wanted to use it with. So Phase or my actual Serato control vinyl. I didn't go and buy Virtual DJ control vinyl. So I don't know how that works. I'm sure that's probably like the best maybe for Virtual DJ since it's made for it. But Virtual DJ was able to recognize my Serato control vinyl. I just basically let it know like whether or not I'm playing A or B. And it worked well. It worked solid my control vinyl, I'm not gonna lie. It did seem like a little bit off. Like, it, like it's not as responsive as Serato, but it's like this much. It's not a lot. It's, you would have to really know Serato very well to actually notice the tiny little bit of difference. But overall, it worked pretty good. Two big problems though I did have with Virtual DJ that I wasn't able to fix. Number one, the beat grids were off, particularly with rock songs, with any songs that weren't like four on the floor, 128 beat, like doom, 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 doom. Now you can redo the beat grids, per song and fix this problem, but it's just a pain in the ass to do that in general. You could do the same thing with Serato as well, but Serato is way more accurate and you rarely have to even do that. Another big problem I had with the performance of Virtual DJ was the tempo lock or key lock. It wasn't as good. Serato's pitch and time is remarkable. You could slow a song down by 50% and not have a problem at all, and that really helps when you're using vinyl. I'm gonna show you an example right now with vinyl, how you kind of speed up a record or slow down a record to kind of match up your beats and whatnot when you're beating mixing and when I do that with virtual you're gonna notice a change in key as I'm doing it whereas when I do it with Serato you hear little or no change in key whatsoever So because of the beat grid accuracy and the difference between the tempo lock or key lock or pitch and time, whatever you want to call it, I got to give performance to Serato. Now let's talk about category three, features. Holy shit does Virtual DJ have a lot of features. So we'll start with Serato first, it's a little more simple. Serato is a DJ program, you could DJ with it, you can video DJ with it if you're a V DJ. It's got some effects, it's got some things you can do with the beat grids, it's got Serato Flip which is really useful. Like there's a lot of good features in Serato, but generally speaking, it's a simplistic and basic program. It just does what it needs to do and that's it. And I love that about it personally. But if you're into features and if you do a couple different things, a couple different like DJ gigs, you might like virtual. Let's talk about virtual's features. So the first and most popular virtual DJ feature is their auto mix feature. It has a smart auto mix which will blend the songs together, even beat mix them together. You can customize the auto mix feature so it starts like right where the sound starts so it takes out any dead gaps or you could start the mix early or there's so many different things you can do with their complicated but very high tech and advanced auto mix feature. Whereas Serato, all Serato will do is auto mix the songs back to back. So literally when the song starts starts wherever the record starts to the song ends and then it'll play the next song for you and that's it. So the reason for that is Serato is more of a purist DJ program. They don't believe in auto mix. They think that DJ should actually be doing the mixing themselves and not having the program do the mixing for them where a virtual DJ was literally found on the opposite concept. So they have a way more advanced auto mix feature. If you're in the auto mix you want to have you know, your DJ program kind of play songs for you in the background while you're doing something else or whatever, then, you know, Virtual DJ is all day the best for that. If you're a karaoke DJ, Virtual DJ is definitely the shit for that. It's literally made for karaoke. It has like a next singer feature where you can put in like the venue name where you're at, the singer's name, and then like what they want to sing, and it keeps a list for you and it saves it. So if you do karaoke every Wednesday night at a certain place, you'll have saved in there like what your popular singers were, like who comes there often, what songs they sing, it makes it easier for them to come up and sing the same songs again. You can add your logo on the screen and like the visuals and the lyric thing. It's just, it literally made for karaoke. So like it's legit. If you're a karaoke DJ, 
Virtual DJ's legit. Virtual DJ has an Ask the DJ for song requests. It's like an app that you can have guests like kind of download at the event, I guess, and then they can use their app to ask you for songs if you wanted to without even having to come up to you, which is, I guess, kind of cool with the whole virus thing. Virtual DJ has scratch DNA where it'll literally scratch a song in for you. So you can just click one button and instead of learning how to scratch, you can just chirp a song in or flare. I saw flares in there. You can do more advanced scratches too. And they sound pretty accurate. They're not too bad. Their newest feature is pretty cool. It's their real-time stem separation feature where you can literally separate the vocals from the drums, the drums from the instrumental, the instrumental from the vocals, whatever. You can separate the stems live in real time, which is pretty cool. I didn't get a chance to use it because it doesn't work with the S9 mixer. There's something about the sound card of the S9 mixer. The only way I can use it is if I was coming directly at a computer, it said, like a message popped up. So I don't know. I'm sure they're gonna make it work with S9s in the future. So I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, it sucks because it doesn't work with everything. It's a newer feature and I'm sure they're gonna make it available for everything, but as of now, it does work with most controllers and they basically assign it to your EQs. So, you know, your low end EQ will take out the drums and you know, your high end EQ might be like the vocals and, and so on. There's like a more complicated one that goes through five EQs. There's a littler one and three EQs, but regardless, you know, I heard a lot of great things about it. I heard it works great and it's definitely kind of like the future as far as like really be able to like blend songs together and make them sound super fluent and coherent by taking out lyrics and preventing the word over word mixes and all that stuff. So yeah, shouts to Virtual DJ, very cool feature. Now I do have to say that there's three major features that Virtual DJ doesn't have that Serato does have and it kind of bothers me. <laughs> it just, when I, when I was using it for a week, it messed up my workflow a little bit. So these are the three features. Number one, when you mess with the EQ or you mess with the high pass or low pass filter in Serato, it'll change the waveform color. It does that so it lets you know that, you know, you have the bass cut out or you have the low pass filter on, you know, so you don't mess up and leave that stuff on the last channel you were mixing. So when you go to mix the next song, the waveforms aren't as colorful. It's like, oh shit, I have something like, you know, off. So it does that as a courtesy and it, you know, it saves me from little dumb little mistakes while I'm mixing and stuff. Virtual DJ only does it with the big obnoxious waveform that goes across the screen. It won't do it on the up and down waveforms. And that kind of bothers me because I use the up and down waveforms. Like I like the vertical rather than the horizontal. It's my personal preference, you know, so it doesn't make much sense. And then another thing is it doesn't do it for the pass filter at all. Like the high pass or low pass filter does not change the waveforms whatsoever. And that's something that like, if you use that to get out of the song as an effect, you leave that on. Again, you have a possibility of messing up if you forgot it was on and and then, you know, the waveforms are the same color. So that's just something Serato does that I really like and that they should integrate into Virtual DJ in the future. Another thing is the drag and drop feature. Within Serato, you can drag and drop any song into the deck. You can take a song from one deck and put it in the other deck. You can take a song from one deck and put it in your prepared folder. You can take a song from a deck or from your library and put it right on your desktop and it'll drag that actual MP3 on your desktop so it'll copy the MP3 on your desktop, which is cool if you're sharing music with friends, you can go to a, a crate, make a little crate form and then drag all those songs right on your desktop to share with them. That sort of thing really helps my workflow and Virtual DJ doesn't do that whatsoever. And the final thing is being able to search groups of crates. So my Serato crates were recognized right away in Virtual DJ and I was able to kind of go to each individual crate and see what's in there and search. But if I want to search a group of crates, right? If I want to go to my wedding dance folder and there's a bunch of subfolders underneath of it, I can't search everything without right clicking and hitting recurse. And that was just annoying. So every time I wanted to search an entire thing, which I do often while I'm mixing live real quick, I have to right click and hit recurse just to search the entire thing, all the folders underneath. Whereas Serato will just, you know, bring everything up right away with their crate system. Now those three things are all things that they're probably gonna fix in future versions and whatnot, but as of now they don't do them and it kinda sucked. So. But with all that being said, as far as the features category, I definitely gotta give it to Virtual DJ. They have way more features and there's a lot more you can do with it. Now let's get on to category four, the cool factor. I put this in just to bust balls because uh, <laughs> we all know who wins this one. Everybody that uses virtual DJ is a little insecure inside because they know that a lot of DJs will look down on them for using it. At the end of the day, whatever works best for you, it doesn't matter. Who cares if you're cool or not? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. They're both great programs, okay? It is what it is, whatever works best for you. At the end of the day, 
That's it, okay? And that's how I truly feel. I don't judge anybody. If DJs do, they probably suck in real life and they're just, they they make up for it by saying, hey, I use Serato and he uses virtual, so I'm still better. And that's how they're able to kind of cope with it in their lives. And that's probably, you know, it. But it's still fun to make fun of people who use virtual DJ. And, um, and yeah, so the cool factor goes to Serato all day, every day until the end of time. Now the next category is stability. Now this is a thing that you know people will kind of go back and forth about, people have different opinions on. I gotta say that I've heard good things about both. I have the most experience obviously with Serato using it over 10 years. I didn't use virtual for more than a week so I, I don't know but it was stable the entire time I used it. It did lock up for me one time actually. This is crazy. Come on. What? But like, I don't know what happened. I mean, I had a login, I forgot my login, I thought it would save in there, and I, I clicked a few buttons and it kind of locked up on me and I had to force quit it and I don't know. So it all worked out, but it was kind of weird that it did that and it kept asking me for like my information every time I logged on. Other people say they log on and they never have to, you know, put any information in, it just saves it and it remembers it. You don't need internet. Mine, I needed the internet just to get on virtual, but I'm sure there's a workaround. I didn't find that, but I'm not gonna sit here and say there's not a workaround. I'm sure there is. But regardless, across the board, people say Serato stable, people say virtual stable. I believe in that virtual stable. I know for a fact that Serato stable. I've only had problems a handful of times with Serato over the last 10 years and there were problems that I solved and found out what I did wrong and was able to prevent those problems from happening in the future. So, you know, there, there's nothing unstable about either program. So I'm going to call it a tie. Now the next category is price. So we'll start with Virtual DJ. Virtual DJ works like this. It's totally free if you want to use it at your house without any type of equipment, right? If you want to use it on your laptop and you can just plug an eighth inch, like a headphone jack in there into a speaker and then kind of DJ with your mouse, you can use Virtual DJ in every single feature they have all day long without any interruption for absolutely free. Now if you want to use Virtual DJ with a controller or with a mixer or with anything, which what they call is professionally using it because you're using a professional piece of equipment, you need a pro license. A pro license costs $2.99 or $19 a month. All the features are included. There's nothing to add, nothing to take away. It's just a flat rate. That's how much virtual DJ costs. So Serato pricing works like this. It's a little cheaper. Number one, you can get it for free with any Serato mixer controller. You buy an S9, you get Serato for free. You buy an SX3 or you know any Serato supported controller, like professional mixer or controller, it's gonna come with Serato for free. You don't have to pay for it. I never paid for Serato in my whole life. The only thing I did pay for with Serato is their expansion packs. Those you can add on separate and they do cost money. Most of them are like $29 to $39, I think. And if you want pitch and time, which is their perfect way to kind of like blend keys and stuff like that, that's a little extra money. If you want their Serato Flip, that's a little extra money. Serato Video is a little extra money, that sort of thing. Those you can add as expansion packs and they're a one-time cost and you got them forever and they're attached to your little Serato ID. Now, if you don't have a mixer that came with Serato or you bought your mixer secondhand or for whatever reason you have to buy Serato so you can use it, Serato has three different tiers depending on what you want with it. If you want just Serato, basic cable without any expansion packs, it's $129 or $9.99 a month. Now they're middle of the road, they're DJ Essentials, which in my opinion is everything you'd ever need unless you're mixing video and stuff like that. That is $11.99 a month or $249 for life. Now their full Serato DJ suite, which includes every single feature, and you could say that like that's basically the comparison to buying virtual DJ, because it comes with all their features in one big package. That's $14.99 a month or $349. So Serato comes in at $5 less a month for everything they offer than virtual DJ, but if you want to buy the program as a whole, it's a hundred dollars more. A cool thing Serato does is they offer Serato DJ Lite, which is completely free and will work with all the beginning beginner controllers. So unlike Virtual DJ, where you have to pay Virtual DJ to use it with any type of hardware, Serato will essentially let you use a light version of their program with all the beginner controllers or the shitty controllers or whatever you want to call them, you know what I mean? But if you're just starting out DJing and stuff, like, you know, you're just learning, you might want to get like a cheaper controller that, you know, wouldn't be the best for live, but like you're just kind of figuring out how to mix songs together and you can use Serato for free at that point. You don't have to pay a thing. So if you're just starting out DJing and you're completely broke, Serato, you can start for free, just buy a controller and you're good to go. Virtual DJ, you're going to have to pay for that shit regardless. And as a result, I say Serato wins the price category. 
Now it's time for the final category, and that is the company. Let's talk about the company, how it was founded, and what they're all about. And this, at the end of the day, is my honest to God biggest problem with Virtual DJ. And I'm gonna explain why. So Serato was founded in 1999 by this guy named Steve West. And he was a bass player in college, trying to learn these crazy bass songs, right? And to learn them, he wanted to basically take the bass song and slow it down so he can like hear all the bass notes that are super fast or whatever and learn them slowly and kind of build it up that way you know it was an easier way to learn well when he went to slow them down it would change the pitch of the bass notes and he couldn't properly learn them because they're all out of key there was no way to like slow down the song without messing up the key so he decided to come up with an algorithm that he ended up calling pitch and time where he could slow down a song and it would stay in the same key or speed it up either way, right? That's when Serato was born. He took that algorithm, he started using it with different things and realized that this would be super useful for DJing because DJs at the end of the day, slow or speed up the tempo of the songs to beat match them with other songs. And if they can do that without messing with like the actual key and make it still sound good, sound like they were all meant to go together, that would make DJing way smoother and way more I don't know, nicer for the ears, right? So that's when he started developing a DJ program. And in 2004, he teamed up with Rain and created Scratch Live and came out with the SL1 box and actually created a noise map technology where not only can you raise the pitch and time and do all that other stuff, but you can also use actual vinyl with their proprietary noise map you know, control tone on it to control MP3s on your computer, which was just mind blowing. At the time, DJ M was one of the first DJ DJs to kind of adapt to the program and use it and he basically pioneered the program out to all the big DJs out there because he was like the you know the main dude at the time so he put it all out there and it literally changed the way everyone DJed everyone stopped using records went to Serato and was able to do so much more with their mixing than they ever could before now let's talk about virtual DJ virtual DJ is owned by Atomics Productions right a-T-O-M-I-X production. So back in 1996, a guy named Stephane Clavel or St Stefan Stephane, I don't know, forgive me, I don't know how to say his name, put, it, put the phonetics in the comments. Anyway, is started by this guy because he came up with a way to actually automix, an AI type of algorithm to mix two songs together. He was the first ever person to come up with the auto mix technology, to mix two songs together, blend them together without having to do a thing. And that's what he based this entire program on, auto mix. Even if you look at the name of the company, it says Atomics, but it's really just one letter away from Automix. So I kind of think that's what he was going for, you know? Now I'm speculating with that because honestly, I dug and dug and dug. There's not a lot of information on Virtual DJ, how it started, the history of the Stefane guy, why he started Virtual DJ. It, it, there's not a lot of information other than what's on their direct website. There's not a lot of interviews, nothing. I couldn't find anything. So I, all I can tell you is what's on their actual website and this is what the website says. Automix Productions, sorry. <laughs> Atomics Productions philosophy has always been to use groundbreaking technology to help bring DJing to the masses by reducing the costs and accessibility and to use the technology to help DJs mix better. We believe that nobody cares if you know how to beat match tracks in one second or one minute. That is not what makes you a better DJ. What you play and how you play it does. Based on that, we focus on bringing out technological tools that help the DJs focus on the artistic part of their skills and relegate the technical side to the machine. Unlike some of our competitors, our goal is not only to preserve the legacy of the DJing culture, and we are not afraid to break the rules and do things differently if we feel it will improve the performance in the long run. Stop right there. That was a dumb sentence, okay? At least get 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 somebody to like proofread these things for you. That made no sense. It didn't come off the tongue right. Like it just you could have wrote that better. All right, just saying. We have often been criticized by the DJ establishment because of this. Nobody likes to be told that what you spent years of your life learning is becoming obsolete. Nobody likes to see that a young kid who started to mix a few months ago can outperform your years of experience. But history has shown, well, have shown, but it should be has shown anyway. 
again and again that every change we implemented, no matter how frowned upon, at the beginning always ended up becoming the norm a few years later. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, was their mission statement, the vision of their company, the, the, the core values of their company. And literally in the middle of that, it, it was they're playing defense. A lot of other DJ companies try and trash us and say like da 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 da, but we believe that blah 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 blah. All right, so this is my problem with it, okay? Number one, the whole company was founded on Automix and founded on the fact that we can make machines, computers mix for you, do it better. What's gonna happen in the future, DJs? What's all of our worst fear, right? What's our worst fear in our lifetime that AI takes over our job, that AI is able to mix and read a crowd better than we could ever do it because they're computers, they're faster, they have face recognizing technology and they're able to check this and know this and have a way more vast library knowledge. We're, we're, we're humans and they're computers at the end of the day, right? Isn't that the most biggest fear we have? Because it's one of my fears. That's when our job becomes obsolete. That's when we get kicked to the curb. That's it. Well, Atomics Productions Virtual DJ is literally in the forefront of doing this. That's what they're going for. That's what they're, they're constantly upgrading their algorithm to make it where it auto mixes better and better and better. And the fact that they have the balls to say that we believe that nobody cares if you know how to beat match tracks in one second or one minute, that is not what makes you a better DJ, and that, oh, um, that some people, seeing a young kid who started to mix a few months ago can outperform your years of experience. Like, what kind of shit is that? Like, number one, you're wrong. You're wrong, okay? You can't take a kid nowadays, even with your 2021 technology, you can't take a kid and let him mess with it for a couple months and he can mix better than some of the top DJs in the country. It's impossible. No program can do it yet. I know you guys are fucking working on it and I can't stand you for it, but it can't happen yet. So you're wrong, okay? Automix technology is not the standard. So you're wrong with that too. It's not the standard. Most DJs really don't use it or only use it for like times that really don't matter. They don't use it to mix dancing portions. They don't sit there and watch their computer mix for them. So what, so they can be on the mic every five seconds and annoy people? Like no, that's not what people are doing. Well, most DJs, that's not what most DJs are doing. But the fact that their entire company is based on that, it's just, Morally, I can't get behind it. I can't. I really can't. I don't judge anybody for using Virtual DJ. I think that you should use the program that works best for you, and I will never, ever, ever judge for that. I'll have a little joke here and there, whatever. I bust balls. I talk shit on Virtual DJ all the time. But at the end of the day, it is a great program, but the values they stand for are completely fucked. Completely fucked. They are out to kill our culture. Their goal is to get machines to replace DJs. And if you're okay with that, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I just will never be okay with that. And even if Virtual DJ came out with the best features on earth, I will never, ever, 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 ever switch to Virtual DJ. I don't care if Virtual DJ will do my taxes, wipe my ass, cook me dinner, I could care less. I will never, ever, ever, ever switch to Virtual DJ because of what they stand for. But anyway, let's summarize this whole video. So at the end of the day, I think both programs are super, super solid and will work for any DJ. A couple recommendations depending on what you do. If you're a karaoke DJ, you should be using Virtual DJ. It is 10 times better than Serato in every way. It has all the greatest features. If you tried to do karaoke with Serato, you'd probably hate your life. It just it doesn't have the features, the integrations to help you. So definitely, definitely, karaoke DJs, get Virtual DJ. You'll thank me later. For the rest of us, club and wedding DJs, it really depends on your personal preference, but my opinion on the matter is I think Serato is the best for mixing. It is the most on point. Definitely if you're using turntables, it is unbelievable with them. And I just think mixing is more fluid. Their beat grids are better. Their, the pitch and time is just unbeatable. Like they, you can't beat that. So I think overall Serato is the better program. It just depends on how you would want to use it. If you're a club DJ, there's no reason not to use Serato because it's the best for mixing. All those extra features that Virtual DJ has isn't really gonna help you in a club. The only feature I'd say that would be great in clubs is the stems feature, how you can take them away and it makes your mixing a lot smoother. I mean, I think it's a really cool feature, but we have edits that like do that for us that are kind of like already pre-edited and stuff. And I don't know, we can all wish that Serato adds that. So that's the only little thing, but does that make it worth using Virtual over Serato, like kind of sacrificing the performance end of it? Absolutely not. 
use Serato. If you want to be a club DJ or you are a club DJ, Serato is the way to go. It's the club standard. It's going to work with every piece of equipment in the club. The sound guy is going to know how to troubleshoot your shit if it doesn't work, all that stuff. Serato is the way to go. When it comes to wedding DJs, it really depends. I do about 100 weddings a year. I am a full-time wedding DJ. I am knee deep in the game. This is all I do. I don't have a day job, okay? I don't have a day job. A lot of these people talking whatever, they all have day job. I don't have a day job. This is what I do. This is my life as a wedding DJ. I think Serato's best because again of the performance. Because I want to be able to mix at my best 100% of the time and I think Serato's best for that. I don't use auto mix. I don't want to use auto mix. Call me a purist or whatever, but I think it just doesn't make sense. Now, if you're into auto mix, then virtual DJ is definitely best for you. Again, you got to make your own decision based on what you like best. And the cool thing about both programs is that you can do them per month or some will come with the mixers and whatnot with Serato. So you can try both out pretty much inexpensively without having to pay $300 just to try it. And you can see which one you like better and then take it from there, you know? And I really think that's what you should do. But that's it, people. Thank you so much again for joining me. Seriously, especially with this, if you have any comments or questions or uh, opinions on the matter, leave it in the comment section below. I really want to hear what all you guys think and I'll be getting right back to you. And I'll see you guys next video.